Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to PwC's Risk and Regulation News Channel and welcome back to the third video of our special deep dive video session on the EBA Stress Test 2025. After a first introduction video where we explain to you the general overview of the EBA stress test methodology and one deep dive video on the changes, the, the fundamental changes in the RWA calculation, we will speak today about, yeah, I would say, the most important type of risk within the EBA stress test and that is credit risk. And like always, I have here an expert with me. I'm not doing it alone. Today I have Piotr here with me. Piotr, maybe you introduce yourself. Hi, Martin. Thanks for having me. My name is Peter Jeraskin. I am senior manager in Martin's team, and I focus on credit risk modeling, IRB modeling, IFRS 9 modeling, and the topics around them, such as EBA or ICAP stress testing. And today, we're looking forward to discuss the stress testing aspects in credit risk. Perfect. Thank you very much, Piotr. You, I know you are an absolutely expert on credit risk, especially on the quantitative parts with a lot of experience also in the, the previous uh, stress test. Um, but I think it's important to, to start a little bit in the beginning. So maybe if you imagine that uh, you have to explain to somebody for the first time how the stress test on credit risk works, uh, how would you explain it? Yeah, thanks, Martin. So basically, of course, we need to understand the overall methodology. And it's important that EBA stress testing is a bottom up exercise. So we have to look into our models, the models existing at the bank. We have certain scenarios provided by EBA and we have to assess how these scenarios impact our PD and LGD estimates. And for that purpose, we need to make multiple assumptions, assumptions related to static balance sheet, for example, or assumptions related to sectoral analysis. And we need to incorporate these assumptions together with scenarios into our models and assess the effect on the um, risk parameters for the bank. Perfect, uh, Piotr. And are there in this stress test for, for 2025 any kind of special considerations that the banks have to consider? Of course. So the biggest one is the effect of CRR3. I think you have a separate video for that. Yeah, so we will... In detail. Yeah. And then also COVID-19 is still really important. So particularly banks have to take into account the EBA guidelines on COVID-19 to see the effect of it on the risk parameters. Perfect. I mean, if we look to the document of the EBA stress test methodology, credit risk is the biggest part of it. And um, of course, in a, such a short video, we cannot uh, cover everything. So maybe we focus on the most important changes for the EBA stress test 2025 compared to the previous stress test. Maybe you can give us there the, an overview. What are the most challenging changes? Of course, we'll be happy to do so. So first of all, there were certain clarifications regarding usage of satellite models. So we have to use satellite models in order to incorporate macroeconomic scenarios into our models. And previously, there was less oversight on what is the structure of these models, what are the assumptions mm -hmm. behind these models. And now there is more guidance on how we have to uh, use these models and how we have to test these models. So that's certainly an important change. Then also there are changes related to forbearance and non-performing loans. So forbearance measures have to be reported now according to COREP. And also there are certain changes related to non-performing loans. So the non-performing loans template is expanded now. And finally, there are more detailed requirements related to coverage of country and sector specific information. So uh, the uh, coverage is, has increased from approximately, I would say, 70% to 80%, which would require some additional effort from the banks. And some sectors which previously were seen as immaterial might now be in scope. Oh, great. Uh, thank you very much, Piotr. So uh, comparing these changes uh, with the changes that uh, we have seen in the RWA calculation, the changes are not so fundamental, but still significant and important. And I think it's uh, important for our clients that they start with a preparation. So maybe you can give us an overview about what are the biggest challenges and how banks can tackle these challenges. 
Of course. So, as Martin, you said, credit risk is the biggest part of the EBA stress testing, and there are multiple changes, starting from CRR3 and ending up with the topics which we have discussed now. So, the first really important thing is that banks make sure that they understand the new methodology, understand the changes in methodology. This year, methodology has changed significantly. So banks should assess the, these changes, how they affect the planning for the stress testing exercise. And then in order to ensure that there are no delays in the execution, in the actual execution of stress testing, it's important that banks start preparing the data already and they will clearly see that this data preparation um, c has some challenges in it. And then it's important that uh, banks perform test run mm -hmm. because based on the test run, banks will see the first potential flaws of the methodology and how these flaws could be uh, mitigated or corrected during the actual stress test exercise. Perfect, thank you so much. Yeah, the last point that you mentioned is um, really crucial, also based on my experience. Um, the previous uh, stress tests were always going smoothly if we were performing a, a test run, a test calculations where we used already the data for a certain date and, and doing all the calculations that are needed uh, for the real stress test. Because very often only if you perform these calculations you realize if there are problems in the input data or problems in the models. So this kind of test run is, is extremely important. Thank you very much, uh, Piotr. Thank you, very insightful, very valuable for our clients. So thank you very much. And I would like to thank you for your attention, dear viewers, and I hope you join us also for the next video. Bye-bye.